Investing in people, I think every problem an agency has is people, people, people-based. And if you don't focus on the people, you will never solve the product. You'll never solve the service. You'll never build the process. You must go through the people. Stephen, you are very big on the right person being in the right seat. So when you do your hiring, it doesn't usually happen 100% of the time, right? What do you do with hires that are culture fit, but is not necessarily in the right seat? Let's say you hire someone to be a brand manager, but then they hate their job. You know, culture does not teach us ethos. Just because you're a high drive introvert who's impatient and detail oriented like me doesn't mean you can run the company like I can. And so it's directional. It's predictive of behavior, but not of ability, not of ethos, not of why. Doesn't explain why I'm high drive, right? You would have to ask me about my childhood to understand it's because, you know, my parents never paid attention to me or something. And I needed to win everything. I needed to win the debate tournament and get on the big choir team and do yearbook and play in chess tournaments on an international scale, right? The point is, is that you wouldn't understand why I'm high drive. When I went around to all these organizations and I worked at a lot of failed startups before I started MAG, they loved my results, but they hated working with me. They're like, oh my gosh, it is so hard to keep up with you. And I would get bored out of my mind in these organizations because I would give them like the entire playbook for the year in the first 10 days and i'd be twiddling my thumbs when we're we gonna do it when we're we gonna do it and they'd be like ah we gotta debate this for like a century and i'd be like no we don't i'm right let's go so recently we, we had a brand manager who was suffering the clients were churning the staff was revolting you know i tried to fix it i tried to switch the team up just to make sure you know maybe it's the team nope it wasn't it was the brand manager and i was like but uh, man this this person is so talented i really don't want to give up on this particular individual so i said where could I see them working out? And I was like, man, this is probably the biggest Excel expert I've ever met in my life. Let's go put them <laughs> on the IT team or business analytics or something and see what happens. It's exactly what I did. And it started working out very magically. Now, obviously, without an IT background or programming experience, there's all sorts of downsides to doing this. But I was willing to take the chance and make the investment. All right, I got the helmet on. Life jacket. Let's do this. I'm a big believer of investing in people. I think every problem an agency has is people-based. And if you don't focus on the people, you will never solve the product. You'll never solve the service. You'll never build the process. You must go through the people. Competency, meritocracy is the solution to problems. At my Amazon guy, we are literally just hiring for competency. That's it. Skills that immediately help lift my company up to excellence. I don't care what country you live in. I don't care what your personal race is or preferences of any kind. If you can win, if you can compete and learn my processes, you will be successful in my system. And I'm not going to cater to any sort of political pressure of any kind because I'm going to be obsessed. I'm going to be relentless with what I believe. And I know that it works, but it's much easier to put a person who will be happy to be themselves in a role. The success rates just go sky high. Like we're talking five, six X way better by putting somebody natural in their natural habitat. First thing I'm thinking of is like, you could put an alligator in Georgia, could happen, but I bet you it'll probably be happier down in Florida. Put the animal in its natural habitat, more likely to succeed, more familiar with its program DNA. That doesn't mean you can't introduce the honeybee to North America and see the whole continent flourish with it. You're very transparent in your LinkedIn, in your YouTube videos that you love hiring Filipinos. Why is it majority of MAG? Why are you hiring Filipinos? Filipinos are amazing. You guys are articulate. You follow directions. You are conformists. You see details. You are the ability to deliver nonstop. That's what you guys do. And that's what an agency needs in a company, in a culture. How would you address or how would you talk to a client who would say, Stephen, I don't want to be outsourced. I want my team to be solely local in the U.S. Sure, no problem. Let me charge you two and a half times as much. Is that okay with you? And everybody <laughs> says no. But I can still get you the same results if I charge you two and a half times less. Does that sound good? Usually they say yes. That's the reason. It's because it's, it's a more economical, scalable system. The second thing I'll mention is that half of my sales team in the account executives are also Filipino. And when I reveal that on the call to the client, they're often surprised. And this has happened several times 
where I'm on a call and they're like, well, do you outsource my contract? And I'm like, hey, do you like this person that's on this call? And they're like, yeah, we love them. They've been great. They're Filipino. And they usually have to eat a bunch of crow and they're like, okay, where do we sign? <laughs> <laughs> and they're always surprised by this. We don't just hire any random person in the Philippines. We hire the best, the talented people of the Philippines. And they have some really good talent over in the Philippines. You guys are easy to work with. And culturally speaking, I'm tied to the hip with you. I don't want to go to another country and an established base. I'm here. I'm in the Philippines. And I'm here to stay. There is some amazing people over there that are up and coming, eager, hungry, capable. They have a good computer. They have good internet access. They're technical. They understand how to think. They're problem solvers. They know how to follow an SOP. That's a key ingredient to success. A lot of our brand managers will be, you know, North American. We have a lot of Mexico and the United States, other European countries, but almost exclusive, 100% of staff that's tactical is out of the Philippines. And we find that is the best way to make a profit. We have one of the most profitable agencies. And it's also the best way to serve clients because I can put more resources on the account for less money. And that means better results. And clients love that stuff. Brands want to grow. They don't come to me and say, hey, I want you to talk to me all day long. They say, hey, can you grow my sales? Can you solve my problem? Can you get my listing reinstated? And do you know, Steven, that when you hire these remote workers from the Philippines, that they're located at the very remotest islands in the Philippines? Many of our Filipinos are building houses with the income that we provide them. So, you know, for those that have a, a heart, I'm changing the world, guys. I don't save babies, but I help people build careers in places where they can build homes and buy a fridge for their mom and do things that you would take for granted in the United States but we can able to do this in the Philippines. And that is charity work, in my opinion, right? Not everybody's gonna agree with that, but like, I believe that creating jobs is the most charitable thing I've ever done in my life. Even though it makes me money, how can I sleep with myself thinking about that? But like, it really is powerful when you feel the emotion, right? And there's so many people on our team who were working at broken careers, having challenges in their life, where we came in, we offered them a role, said, be yourself, and they excelled. And then we pay them more than they've ever been paid before. And they're like, this is amazing. And their life changes. And you're just, you're a part of something magical. That's so rewarding to me as a company owner and a founder. I'm a good example of that, Steven, because prior to me working with Mag, I was very worried because I'm not sure if people would know this because I don't really share a lot about my private life, but my oldest son is in the autism spectrum. And I thought that when we found out, I, I'm going to be a stay at home mom forever for me to support my son and to join his therapy sessions. I really didn't expect that, you know, I could continue having a career while being a good mother to my children and being a good wife to my husband at the same time. So even if I work nights, to be honest, this works for me because everyone is asleep. And when, <laughs> when they wake up, I'm still there, so they don't you're feel a, that I'm working or that I'm gone. <laughs> you're a super mom, first of all. God bless what you're pulling off. But I also believe it's possible that other people can do the same thing. Like, I personally believe you can be prosperous in all things. Family, career, spiritual. Roxy, it was um, admirable to hear what you did for your church. It's great to see your impact on your family because you're, you're able to be around. These are life-changing events that you've experienced. This is the norm at MAG. It's not the isolated case. It's like you could talk to a random person at MAG and they will share a similar story to this. They'll also tell you MAG is the hardest place they've ever worked. And, and they'll, they'll explain, but I love it because I'm learning in dog years. It's like for every day here at MAG, it's like seven days somewhere else. And there's just so much resources available. But we do require a lot in commitment to that. And we put a lot of pressure. Um, so there's a trade-off, but it's one that people happily pay. You can apply at MAG. Just go to myamazonguy.com slash jobs. Or maybe you dropped out and did sales door-to-door. -door. 